J.W. Hall Enterprises Incorporated, manufacturers of quality stall and barn components since 1982, are engineered with your horse's safety in mind and are guaranteed to outlast the competition for less. Made of heavy gauge hot tipped galvanized steel, J.W. Hall's durable rust free components will give you years of trouble free service. And with J.W. Hall's modular designs, it's easy and affordable to upgrade existing facilities or new construction to meet your exact specifications and personal needs. Please view this entire video before you begin assembly. Here's how to assemble JW Hall round pens. To set up your round pen, please see your written instructions detailing layout. First, take the framework components for one section, lay them out, and slide the top and bottom ribs into the bolting inserts attached to each of the side posts. This allows you to bolt framework together, completing one rectangular section of the round pin. Next, you will stand the frame and move it into position. In this case, the frame will sit on concrete piers. Now you are ready to drop the hinge pins in, attaching the frame to the last completed section. First dropping the bottom pin in, and then the top. Insert a 7 16 by 2 inch carriage bolt with nut and flat washer through the bolting insert and tighten. This will lock all four corners in place, making your framework rigid. Continue to assemble your sections 360 degrees until you reach the door section, which is usually the last section to be assembled. Slide the door post over the ear on the bottom tubing, then the top tubing. This gives you a frame door opening Complete your door section by sliding posts into the bolting inserts on each end and lock together using six two and one half inch carriage bolts. The other sections required only four. Position this final section and drop the hinge pins in. This will complete your round pen frame. Now you are ready to load the walls with boards. Measure the length between the channels, subtract a quarter inch, and this will give you the correct length to cut your boards. Most round pens have two treated boards on the bottom, followed by untreated two by six center match tongue and groove boards. As you can see, the boards slide into the channel and the tongue and groove slide together, providing a solid locked wall. After inserting 10 boards, slide the grill over the boards. This not only holds the boards in place, but prevents horses from cribbing. Slide another board into the top of the grill and into the channel, locking the grill in place. Add a 12th board to complete your 8-foot wall. Now you're ready to install your hole down a mechanical device used to create downward pressure on the boards and grill, locking them in place. Put the all thread through the hole in the top tubing. After screwing the half inch nut with flat washer onto the all thread, screw the all thread into the hole down. Then tighten the nut up against the top tubing. 
This creates downward pressure. Careful though, too much pressure will bow the tubing. Each section will require a hold down on both ends of the top tubing. Now you're ready to load the door with boards. Start by sliding the boards into the door frame which has a channel on each side. Using a scrap piece of tongue and groove wood, tap each board into the other, locking them together. After the seventh board, the last three must be slipped through the bottom of the door. Using large headed roofing nails or screws, secure the bottom board. Now you're ready to attach the rollers to the door. Screw a nut onto the roller stem before sliding it into the slot on the top of the door. Then screw a nut onto the stem on the other side. Each door requires two rollers. Next, mount the track on top of the top tubing of the door wall. Slide it up to the head of the carriage bolt on the door wall and screw it in place. Once the track is secure, you're ready to hang the door. Slide the rollers into the track and roll the door shut. Adjust and tighten the top locking nut down onto the top of the door, securing the rollers into place. To add the door handle, put a half inch shoulder bolt through the hole in the handle and the door frame. Using a quarter inch Allen wrench, Tighten the shoulder bolt, adding the nylon locking nut to the back side and tightening with a wrench. When the shoulder bolt bottoms out with the locking nut, the handle is in place. The locking nut will prevent the shoulder bolt from backing off, securing the door handle permanently. Roll the door closed to see that it is level and the handle lines up with the slot. Your round pen is now complete and ready set on piers, a concrete pad beneath each of the posts. However, because all JW Hall components are hot dipped galvanized, they can be placed directly on the ground without the fear of rusting. This also provides our customers with the option of permanent placement or easily moving it to another location. Here's how to assemble J.W. Hall stall fronts. To show you how to build stall fronts and sidewalls in a pole barn, we'll start with the sidewall. You first level an 8-foot piece of channel on the post. Using quarter-inch lag bolts, you mount the channel to the center of the post. Secure the channel at the bottom, midsection, and top. After mounting the channel on the opposite post, you're ready to load the first board. Just slide it into the channels, get it level, and secure it with a screw on each end. For best results, we recommend that you use 2x6 tongue and groove lumber. After measuring the distance between the two channels, subtract one quarter inch for the length of your boards for the walls. This wall will have a grill, so we will load it 10 boards high. At this point, measure the distance between the two legs of the channel and compare it to the length of the grill. Often in a pole barn, the width between the posts will vary, so it might be necessary to trim the grill channel to fit. You can use a simple hacksaw or a power hacksaw as shown here to cut the channel to length. Once it fits, install the grill over the tenth board. Then, place a board into the top channel of the grill locking the grill in place. Complete the 8-foot wall by placing the 12th board on top and screwing it into place to lock all boards. 
This is how your completed sidewall or dividing wall will look. If desired, you can also load 18 boards to make a solid wall. Moving with side posts. As you can see, the stall front will include a door post, which will fit over the ears of the top and bottom tubing. Now you're ready to use the center post of the newly built sidewall as a reference line to start your stall front. This will guarantee level stall fronts and grills. Draw a line parallel to the bottom of the first board. This must be even with the top of the bottom bolting insert. Once you have drawn your reference line on the side and front of the wooden center post, you are ready to stand the metal post and secure it to the outside of your stall. Again, stand it, raise it to the reference line, and level it to the top of the bottom bolting pin. To prevent splitting your wooden post, you'll need to drill a pilot hole in the post before securing the channel to it. Use a one half inch by four inch lag bolt to secure your post. You'll then need to repeat these steps again to secure the top. To build the stall front section, Connect the door post over the bolting insert of the top and bottom tubing to make the door frame. And lock together with two and one half inch carriage bolts. After tightening the bolts, stand the stall front section. Sliding it into the bolting inserts of the metal posts you have just secured. To connect your end post to the top and bottom tubing, level it and tap it to line up with the holes of the bolting inserts. Secure it to the wooden post with half inch lag bolts. After securing the end post, you have a completed frame for the stall front. At this point, you can continue to repeat these steps until all of your stall front frames throughout your pole barn are finished. As you can see, the result is a clean configuration. You can now start loading the walls with your pre-cut boards. Again, measuring the distance between channels and quarter inch. To mount the door track, secure it to the top tubing of the door frame, slide it up to the head of the carriage bolt on the door wall, and screw it into place. When installing the swing out feeder, you'll load six boards. Set the swing out feeder over the sixth board and lock it into the channel of the metal post. After the swing out feeder is in place, lock it into position and add four boards for a total of 10. Install the grill, locking the grill channel over the 10th board. As you can see, the top of the grill and the swing out feeder are on a level plane. Now you can slide another board into the grill channel and over the swing out feeder. This will lock the grill and feeder in place. When you add your 12th board, your 8-foot stall front is completed. To add your hole downs, insert the all thread down through the hole in the top tubing. Add the washer and nut and screw into the channel. Then screw the nut up to the top, tightening to add pressure to provide a solid locked wall. Next, prepare to hang the door by attaching the rollers. Each roller has a pin to which you add one nut, the locking nut, 
and insert into the slotted hole in the top of the door. Secure with another nut inside the door frame, tightening only enough to hold the roller to the frame while hanging the door. Leave this nut loose until you're ready to hang the door because it'll be used to level your door and make it hang away from the wall. Slide the rollers into the track, keeping the rollers straight. And slide the door to the stop on your post. You'll repeat this process for all doors on your stall front. If an adjustment is necessary, tighten or loosen the locking nut and holding nut to raise or lower the door. To add the door handle, tighten a half inch shoulder bolt with an Allen wrench while simultaneously turning a nylon locking nut on the back side of the door frame to prevent shoulder bolt from backing out. Now the door handle is permanently secured and you have finished all the stalls in your barn. There are a variety of components to choose from. A swing out feeder, a door with extended metal bottom, a door with diamond shaped grill. This is an example of a completed pole barn with these stall fronts. Notice the poles go up to create your structure. The finished stalls give your barn a very clean look. Here we see an inside back wall with window connecting to a dividing wall with a grill. The look is smooth. Note the metal covers exposed wood to eliminate cribbing. It's beautiful, durable, and easy to assemble. How to Assemble J.W. Hall Starter Stalls A starter stall has a four wall frame. Lay out all your posts and top and bottom tubing. Generally starting with your front wall, place your door post, two end posts, and top and bottom tubing into position as shown. This gives you a frame complete with door opening. Insert your top and bottom tubing into the bolting inserts on each post and bolt them together. Then stand the front section. Now you can stand the two back posts up, giving you the four corners of your starter stall. Insert the bottom tubing into the bolting inserts on your end posts and bolt together. Repeat these same steps with the top tubing, completing your starter stall framework. At this point, you'll want to tighten up all your bolts, squaring up your frame. Once this has been completed and your frame is secure, you're ready to load the walls with boards, making sure to measure the distance between the channels for correct board length. We'll begin by loading the back wall first. Since it won't have a grill, it will require 18 boards. However, it will have a window. Load 10 boards into the channel. Then you'll load seven more boards, cutting 36 inches out of the center of them to make a frame for the window to set in. These boards simply slide into the channel of the post and the channel of the window. Sometimes you may have to cut a slot out of the top or bottom board to fit around the window. This will depend on the milling of your tongue and groove boards. After the boards are in the back wall, you can then install the hold downs, locking them in place. Now you can start loading the side walls. 
you either load 10 boards to install a grill, as we are here, or 18 boards to construct a solid wall, giving you added flexibility in your own design. As you can see, we've loaded six boards into the front section to accommodate a swing-out feeder. Then, four more boards for our grill. After installing the grill, add two more boards and two hold-downs, locking everything in place. Next, place the grills into your side or dividing walls. And again, placing two more boards above each grill, holding them in place. Add two hold downs to each, and you have now completed your eight foot walls. If you want, you can now add roof jacks, available in any length to meet the exact pitch specifications for your barn roof. Mount your door track to the top of the door tubing. Place the door onto the track, slide it in, and latch it. You now have a completed stall. If you need additional stalls, just continue adding them as you see here in this 14 stall barn. Notice how the roof jacks rise and support the rafters to make the roof of this barn. This is all made of hot tipped galvanized steel construction 